Welcome back to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We're going to wrap up our over-under win total predictions with the Seattle Seahawks. Vegas has that set at five and a half, and I think that goes under. I think they'll be lucky if they got to five wins, let alone six or seven. I think we got to think more along the lines of three and 14 here this year for them. And when you look at these position groups, you start to understand why. Pete Carroll, as a head coach, he's going to do the best he can to steer the ship in the right direction. He'll try to get the most out of everything he has. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be enough. If it wasn't enough for Russell Wilson, it's not going to be enough for Geno Smith or Drew Locke. And don't even be surprised if we see Jacob Eason get a nod here or there. If it actually comes to that, I think that's a very strong possibility. That's how bad this quarterback group is. I don't understand how people can just hit the reset button and say, well, I think Geno Smith's going to do good this year. Uh, I think he's going to actually be respectable. How? What evidence have we seen that he can start a full 17 and do this? Same thing with Drew Locke. With Drew Locke, you'll be lucky if you get 13 points. That's how bad this is. The receiving core, to me, really isn't that scary. I like DK Metcalf, but at the end of the day, that magic between him and Russell Wilson kind of faded out as the year went on. It's become a lot less appealing. Is he still good? Yeah. Is he still a freak athlete? Yes, he is. But it seems that teams have figured him out to some degree and are able to take him out of the equation. Tyler Lockett, the same thing. He does have some good deep route running ability. I've seen that from him. But another one of those situations where I've seen him physically just get taken out of games by even subpar corners. It's not like it takes an elite corner to take this guy out of the equation. And then what do they have behind him? They got Marquise Goodwin and D Eskridge who basically do the same thing. All they can do is go deep and they really haven't established themselves as any other kind of a receiving threat except for that. So the receiving core, in my opinion, is very predictable. And then they bring in Noah Fant. He's slow. Denver didn't feel like he was worth keeping around and then they want to give him a chance like they're saying like scheme and coaching is the reason why he wasn't doing good in Denver that's bullshit and it's just funny that Drew Locke follows him over here it's like yeah you want is that what you want Seattle because you saw how bad they were is that what you want to build your team around you even want that stench in the building and apparently they do the offensive line looking pretty bad too Full of teams, hand-me-downs, and bad draft picks. I actually really dislike the pick of Charles Cross in the first round. I don't feel like that's a slam-dunk pick. Obviously, Austin Blythe, Gabe Jackson, you know, the Chiefs and, and the Raiders didn't feel like they were worth keeping around. So now you're just using teams' hand-me-downs, hoping for the best. Right tackle is completely wide open for this team. We have no idea who's even going to start there. And left guard isn't very good either. So not only do they not have a lot to throw to, that's dangerous, but Geno Smith is going to be under a lot of pressure. And on top of that, they don't really have an established number one back. Obviously, it's going to be a backfield by committee, but Chris Carson, in my opinion, was an elite running back when he was healthy. Obviously, he never could be on the field, so it doesn't really matter. But we don't know if Rashad Penny can become a 1,000-yard rusher. Obviously, they're putting a lot of stock in their second-round pick, Kenneth Walker, but the way Seattle has drafted the past two, three years, I don't really have much faith in that I don't because a lot of their picks are misses. So this offense is going to be overly predictable, plus a very underwhelming cast of characters here. Not very good. And on the defensive side, more of the same, just depletion. The defensive line, one of the worst defensive line units in the league. Shelby Harris is a good defensive lineman. And I think I think people tend to overrate him. And I think that's why Denver didn't keep him. He, they didn't feel like he was worth the big payday. And I agree with that. He's a good player, but I think a lot of people think he's going to be like, not Aaron Donald necessarily, but one of those defensive linemen that can rush the passer and stop the run and steal, seal the edge. I, I don't think so. So I feel like that was just a desperation move, with, and they have no depth behind him on the defensive line. The linebacking core outside of Jordan Brooks is pretty bad. Uchenna Nwuzu, he's somebody that can rush the quarterback a little bit, but even he was just a rotational piece with the Chargers. So they're depending on him to come in here and actually be a full-out starter. I don't think that's going to work out. 
So again, another position that has no depth. And then the secondary, it's also one of the worst units in the league. Artie Burns was shipped from Chicago to here. And then he was in Pittsburgh to start his career. None of these teams wanted him. And those are all teams that need corners. So what does that tell you? And that in Seattle is going to be depending on him as a true number one here this year. And behind that at corner, there's really not a whole lot. Justin Coleman's all right, but there's not a solid number one here. The teams with any kind of receiving play at all are going to be easily putting up points. I would say the safety group is the lone bright spot. It's the only complete unit on the team. Um, Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs. Uh, That's a good pairing. We know Jamal Adams is already hurt, though, again, so we got to see how that all plays out. But not a whole lot to work with. And then the one storyline that nobody really talked about was just the fact that Carlos Dunlap didn't even want to be here. They couldn't even afford to keep him in the building, and he is a good player. May not be elite anymore. I don't – you know, we haven't seen that. Like, I don't know if he's going to go for – 14 sacks or do anything crazy but he opted out they let him go and now he's in a much better situation with the Chiefs he'll flourish there but this is just depletion city I see three wins Uh, that's what I see for them this season and that wraps up our over under win total prediction we did all 32 teams as promised the power rankings were coupled in with that so we got it all done the homework's put in I'm ready for the regular season to start. At some point within the next couple of days, I'm going to do a video just telling you guys where I think you should place your money, uh, some of the bets that I'm going to be doing this season, um, what I think is our best chance to win a strategy. I'm going to give that. And I'll do any big news that breaks heading up to the regular season. I'll be following free agency. There's a lot of good, you know, a lot of quarterbacks that we got to see what happens with them, like the Steelers, what happens with their quarterback battle. Um, so a lot to look forward to here heading into the season. And like I said, a week before the regular season starts that week before that Thursday night game, I will definitely have all the picks up for you guys over unders teasers our two team parlays. Everything will be up ready to go.